Lord today, God. We realize that we're nothing without you, Father God. So that's that you give us for our sins that we committed the unknown and the known, Father. And that's that you open our hearts, our minds, our ears, that we're able to receive whatever comes forth before us, God. And that's that you help us, Lord, to digest it, Lord God, but also react it, Lord, in a way into our everyday lives. Lord, we thank you for today, God, and ask that today be a great, wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen.
St. James, amen, bless God, amen, it's one of those books that gets to the heart of what it really means to be, amen, a child of God. One could spend the duration of your spiritual lives living on the outskirts of actually stepping into the true power of God. For it is nothing, amen, bless God, to have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. So today, amen, bless God, we're talking about the power of God, amen, that worketh in us. Amen, the power of God that worketh in us. We're talking about the real. We're talking about, amen, bless God, earth-shadowing power of God. We're talking about, amen, bless God, an anointing to overcome the wiles of the devil, our adversary. Amen, bless God, I'm good, amen. We're talking about, amen, bless God, an anointing that prepares the people of God to be able to address the stresses and the trials of life. Talking about that power that shatters frustration, causes depression to flee, amen. That power that serves as a mobile dressing room for the saint. And allow the saint, amen, bless God, to, amen, discard the garment of heaviness and robe up, amen, in a garment of praise. Amen. Talking about this power that puts a smile on your face, amen, bless God, when there's a frown on your heart. The true power of God. Talking about the power, amen, that walks with you, lives with you, stands with you when you're not found, amen, necessarily amongst the saints. Talking about this confident power of God, life-changing, earth-moving power. So, amen, James starts off here in this first verse of his book. And he says, amen, with this introduction, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are set abroad, greeting, my brethren, to my say power. power, amen, power, amen, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptation. Amen. Literally, amen. From a literary standpoint, amen. That verse is akin to what we call foreshadowing. Those of you that are under the impression that once you get saved, you all may be seated. Amen. You don't have to worry about going through. You don't have to be concerned about, amen, bless God, things not going the way you want them to go. Amen. I encourage you to go back and read that second verse because in that second verse, we find foreshadowing. The word of God says, amen, bless God, you need to count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptation, the telltale there is, if you're being asked to count it all joy, amen, when you fall, amen, then you best believe, amen, that you're going to fall, amen, into diverse temptations. It's just part, amen, part for the course. Things are going to happen. Situations are going to come forth. Oftentimes, these situations are the very catalyst that God used to put us in the proper place that he would have us to be, that his true purpose for our lives might come to bear. God, amen, orchestrates, amen, better than Lawrence Welk. The beat, amen, the constant beats of our lives that puts us exactly where we need to be, amen, that the musical composition called the deeds of a man's life might be exposed before all of those that would hear the music. And so, amen, bless God, it is trials, it is trouble, it is disappointment, amen, it's those things that you could not have foretold for yourself that God allowed to come to pass, that actually puts you in position to be exactly where you need to be, where you ought to be for the true purpose of God to be birthed forth through you. Oftentimes, though, there are too many of us that get shaken to our core, amen, we get messed up beyond spiritual recognition as a result of frustration. Therefore, amen, bless God, we are like waves 
that are found on the shore. One day, amen, bless God, we're calm, and the next day we're billowing. And it all, amen, is determined by how hard the winds of life are blowing. But James is saying to us here, amen, bless God, look for it. And when it comes, amen, bless God, begin to clap your hands and begin to stamp your feet and count it all joy. Amen. When you enter into divers temptation. Now, that's a funny way, amen, to talk about your trial. See, because James is classifying your trials and your tribulations as, amen, bless God, temptations. He's classifying them as, amen, instruments that are being used to either propel you closer to who you're supposed to be in God or pull you further away from that place that God would have you to be. And so, amen, bless God, the man of God said, get happy because you realize, amen, bless God, that your steps have been ordered by the Lord and you have been set up that the true greatness of God that lives in you might be exposed. And so, amen, bless God, he goes on to say, amen, knowing this, that the trying of your faith ain't doing nothing but working your patience, putting you in a position where you might be more for God. Now, this message means nothing to folk that don't want to be more for God. It means nothing, amen, bless God, for people that's cool, amen, bless God, with just pretense. That's okay, amen, bless God, with just fooling folk. Amen, but if you want to be more for God, that you might have what you need to have, to have the external and the internal power given to one by the presence of God living within, then you're going to need to be built up in your most holy faith. And the only way you're going to be built up in your most holy faith is be put in situations whereby you are made to wait on God, trust God, and be patient with God. Amen, it's not good. Amen, to testify on the mountain and carry someone else on Tuesday. And then when thirds the time comes and it's your time to go through, you don't look nothing like what you told somebody else they ought to look like when they go through. Means nothing, amen, bless God, for you, amen, to try and put someone else towards heaven. And all the while, you're easing yourself out the back door that leads to the bowels of destruction. So the man of God, amen, bless God, is saying, amen, bless God, understand that what you are going through is giving us a word to help that most, amen, bless God, precious gift of God that he's given all of us to help us be able to move forward and realize him in a very real way, be sure up, and that's your mind. Amen, it doesn't matter how high you can shout. Doesn't matter, amen, bless God, how fast you can run. Doesn't matter, amen, bless God, how much word you know. But if your mind is not stable, y'all ain't said nothing to me, amen, bless God, if your mind is flaky, amen, if one day, amen, you know that Jesus is the son of God, but tomorrow you're not quite sure, amen, bless God, then your faith is of no consequence. If one day, amen, bless God, you are settled with your position in God, Amen. But in the same day, just two hours after you testified about how good God is, you begin to doubt even if God knows your name. Then you must understand, amen, bless God, that there is a contamination that the enemy is utilizing within you that will cause you, amen, bless God, not to be able to realize your full potential in God. Now, I know, amen, bless God, this word is maybe not a word, and a lot of folk would desire because we all love to shout. We all love to run. Amen, bless God. But if we're going to be something for God, then we're going to have to get somewhere in him as it relates to what our faith allows us to endure and what our faith allows us to overcome. And so the man of God says, amen, but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, Bible says, let him ask of God that give it to all men. How, apostle? He give it to all men liberally. Bless God. Tell your neighbor, go to God. See, amen, bless God. Sometimes it's easier for us to pretend as though someone else can give us what only comes from God. Especially when we haven't made up in our minds that we're going to give God what it is he wants from us. 
And so, amen, bless God, we play that, am I going to go to mama or am I going to go to daddy type of thing with God? Simply because we know our relationship is not where it should be with daddy, then we go to mama and ask her for the keys. And so we try to play that game with the people of God because we know we're not living the way we ought to live. And so we figure we go to Reverend Janice and get a blessing from Reverend Janice that only can come from God. But the Bible says, amen, bless God, if you are lacking something, Amen. You need to have your relationship in a position whereby you can go to God. Amen. And ask of him who giveth to all men liberally. In other words, amen, he'll give you exactly what you need in abundance. Somebody say, Lord, help my mind. And upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But here we go, amen. And we are talking about the power of God that worketh in us and I'm not talking about in a performance now amen I'm not talking about in something that you learned from being in church so much I'm not talking about amen bless God your presentation now I'm talking about the true power of God that only breaks forth as a result of your relationship with him and a mind and a heart amen that's yielded to him that has already declared to the cosmos amen that where he leads me I will follow Word of God said, amen, bless God. But when you come to the man, when you come to God, that's why I want you to know and don't get mad at me. Amen, you can shout in church till you get dizzy. Amen, you can lay in the floor till they turn the lights off and put a mattress on your head. Amen, and put a blanket up under your neck. Amen, bless God. If you don't get yourself together in your mind, amen, next year this time, you're going to be in the same place. Amen, that you was in this year. Amen, bless God. You can find somebody that's going to whine on the same key that you whine on. Amen, you can find you somebody that's going to cry in the same method. Amen, with the same type of staccato that you cry in. Amen, bless God. But if you don't get yourself together with God's help in your mind and begin to seek God's face for stability in terms of who you believe him to be in you and who you have declared within yourself that you're going to be in him. You're going to always be in a situation where you're trying to serve God through a surrogate. Tell your neighbor, I don't need no surrogate. Amen. That's why Jesus died for my sin. I don't need just to get happy because somebody understands me. That's the issue with the body of Christ. The body of Christ does not really have any true intentions of changing. The body of Christ really does not have any true intentions of being what God will have them to be or dying in the flesh. Amen. But we get excited just because they understand me. Tell your neighbor, just understanding you ain't going to get you delivered. Amen. Just understanding you is not going to get you set free because Satan will send you imps from hell that understand you because they are the devils that's causing you to be the way you are. Stop getting happy just because somebody understands me. Tell your neighbor, I need deliverance. I need to be set free. And it starts with me. I can't be saved today. Almost saved tomorrow. Come on here. Back in the world the day after. And head toe up like menudo in somebody's boat. Tell your neighbor, God has a plan for your life. But we've got to get it together. That's why we're walking around with a crook in our neck because many of us are looking for a shoulder to cry on. Amen, bless God. God didn't die for you to have to look for shoulders to cry on. Y'all ain't saying that to me, but that's all right. He didn't die for you to be pitiful. He didn't die for you to need a crutch. He didn't die for you to almost be going back into the world every other day. But he died that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Where? Here's your abundant life. Tell your neighbor, ask him for yourself. That's what my mama used to tell me. I said, mama, let me get the car. She said, your daddy said, hey amen, the next time you want that car, you got to come ask him. I said, mom, you go ask him for me. She said, ask him for yourself. Some of us sanctified, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost folk need to tell some people that skirting around the outskirts, around the edges, ask it for yourself. If you stop committing fornication, you can ask him. If you stop committing adultery, you can ask him.
stop talking about folk behind their back, get faithful to the things of God, you can ask him. Ask your neighbor, why can't you ask him? He ain't being nothing but good to you, so why can't you ask him? Because you haven't been good to him. And so the Bible says, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. Who am I preaching to? Ask in faith with what apostle? Stability. That's what I'm preaching about tonight. Stability. Not up one day today and down tomorrow. Not walking in assurance today and tomorrow you don't know. What about your testimony? What about those things that you know only God could have done for you? Come on here. What about the doors that got opened? that your best friend couldn't have opened for you. No less talking about your enemy. What about how God reached way down to pick you up when you didn't even know you could be seen? I'm talking about the power of God that works in you. Flip that thing, not just exceedingly, abundantly more, but it's about the power of God that works in you. It's about stability. It's about what apostle? Spiritual warfare. It's about some I will, what I will do and what I won't do. It's about the fight. And all of us must wage. It's not about a good feeling. Come on here. It's about faith. It's about believing. If the word is on the bracelet, it's not the bracelet. Not the bracelet. The bracelet is not going to help you please God. But the words on the bracelet will. What will Jesus do? You made up in your mind, amen, bless God, that you're going to do the thing that you know God would have you to do. Then he bless you. Whereby you can be counted on not just by God. Honey, when you get yourself where you're supposed to be in God in your mind, you can be counted on by the people of God. There's an issue, amen, bless God, when the people of God can't count on you. If the people of God can't come on you to be what you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to be doing, there's no way God can. Because the Bible says, how can you say you love him who you have not seen? So it starts with the people of God wavering. I know I'm talking around. Lack of stability. And that's what God wants to deliver us from. He wants us to be what apostle. First of all, mentally strong. He wants us to be mentally strong, built up, amen, bless God, on the word of God, in the word of God, having digested the word of God for ourselves. This is going to seem gross, but it's the truth. Many are foul, many are bird. Amen, when those chicklings are in the, in the nest, they fly off, amen, bless God, and they spend all day eating and foraging. And then they come back to the nest and they regurgitate. Parts of what they ate for the bird, for the babies. But let me tell you what they don't do. They don't give the bird everything. They have to keep some stuff for themselves. Because if I give you everything, then I won't have anything to live off of myself. And as you go about the business of giving other people the word, make certain you keep enough of the word for yourself. That when trouble come, issues come, bills begin to roll, you got enough to be kept. By what apostle? The hand of God. Huh? According to the power of God, that what apostle works in you. Hunt your neighbor and say you too wishy-washy. Tell your neighbor, I can't build nothing with you. I can't have nothing with you because I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know where you're going to be. I don't know what you're going to be up to. One day you all about it and tomorrow I can't find you. But when the organ get right, you'll shout me out of here. Not about shouting. Get your life together. God will give you some water parcel to shout about. Because you can shout and still shout. It's not up to the preacher just to deliver you. 
Now it's up to the prophet to just deliver you. You got to have a desire to be want to be delivered. Because after the touch, you got to abstain from the very appearance of evil. I can't pray your desire to love God away. You got to have that mind in you that was what apostle also in Christ Jesus. Then you cannot despise humble beginnings. Some of y'all will never start because you can't start here. And because you can't start in the pulpit, you won't start in the pew. And the devil has fooled you. But because before you get in the pulpit, just here a little, there a little, line upon, upon line, precept upon precept. You got to start somewhere. Ask your neighbor, why won't you start? Because I want to be up there. You don't know what he had to go through to get up there. And every man got to do what apostle, work out his own soul salvation. God is raising up these children, not just to be raising them up. They're going to replace some of us. What apostle, we can't stay here. And only what you do for who? For Christ. Facebook and all this social media is going to be the death of some of us. Because it's a safe haven for pride. If you did it for Jesus, why you got to post it? He said, if you put your arms out before men, you have your reward. He said, that when you do your arms, he said, do them in secret. And God that sees in secret will reward you openly. You didn't even get a chat from Facebook. Post it what you did on what you thought you did. Lord, help my life. This power, a double-minded man, listen. A double-minded man can't quite get it together. That's what you ought to be fighting about. You ought to be binding up the way your mind work. You ought to be coming up against the warfare in your mind. But the, because the Bible says a double money man is what? He's unstable. Yes. You can't trust him because he can't trust yourself, himself. He wearing a belt and suspenders. He's unstable in all his ways. That joker can't trust himself and you messed up if you trust him. Because he'll tell you yes. And tomorrow his mind don't change to no. And you don't build your whole program around him. And he ain't got enough power to fight the devil that come to rob you of your mission in God. Tell you never, it's time now to grow up. Time to get somewhere in God. Time to stop offering God these lame excuses. God don't want to hear that. Not right after he done bless you. Open doors for you, made ways for you. And you train God in over a blue bag of Doritos. Any old reason not to obey God. But I tell you before God today, you're going to need him again. My God, you're going to need him again. What leverage are you going to have to get a move from God after you done lied to him and told him, say, God, if you do it, I'll be faithful. If you do it, I'll be there for you. I'll surrender all. Then soon as it looked like he did, you ain't out in the woods yet. You can't be found nowhere doing what you're supposed to be doing for God. But shouting. And singing. Double-minded man is unstable in all this way. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Huh? Because there's a flower of grace. Amen, blessed they unstable in all this way. The Bible said amen. And don't let him think that he's going to receive anything from God. There's a power that work in us. What about this power, apostle? It addresses serious things. He's prepared, amen, bless God, to deal with the serious things of life. 
And I'm going to tell you the truth, amen, bless God. Every generation has a struggle. Don't you let the devil tell you that your generation got more that it's going through than the generation before you. The devil is a liar. The Bible says sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. We had to go through some stuff in 1980. It won't the internet, but it was enough to take you to hell. They had stuff in 1970, 1940, 1930. Because there is nothing new under the sun. But don't you sit back and get comfortable because you feel like you got more to deal with and we don't understand it. Hell is not going to look like a democratic convention. It's not going to be set up based off of what year you lived and what year you died. Everybody in hell is going to co-mingle. Because sin is sin. So, amen, bless God, we got something to do with this power that allows us to address everyday living. Everyday living, that's what you need the power for. To overcome the wiles of the devil. To reach up and be able to claim those things that God said were yours. By what apostle? By faith. How huh, since the day of the prophet? The kingdom has suffered violence and the violence has taken it by faith, by the power of the Holy Ghost. You don't get it sleeping with folk you ain't married to. You don't get it drinking and carrying on getting high. You get it surrendering to your understanding of God's will for your life. I don't care how many folk applaud you in the arena. Some of your best singers going to be in hell. Led by the most awesome praise and worship leader ever created. Satan, Lucifer. That joker, amen, bless God, don't need no electricity to make music. He was built, amen, bless God, to make music. He had pipes in his anatomy. And he could just walk 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 and you can't out sing him. You can't out pretty him. You can't deal with him without the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And that with what apostle? With power. Standing power. Tell your neighbor, say, see me after you stand a while. Time will tell. So we see Joshua. Joshua is up next. Joshua, amen, bless God, won't be able to make it outside of the power of the Holy Ghost. The keeping power of God, the power of God that worked in him. He needed that power. Because here comes, amen, bless God, a trial by fire. Here comes, amen, bless God, a situation that only the ordination of the Holy Ghost is going to be able to help him get over. This ain't no trial, amen, bless God, or no superficial nature. This ain't no trial, amen, bless God. It just looks good aesthetically. But this is a trial whereby, amen, bless God, if God don't move, you will certainly be destroyed. But I'm so glad on today that this God that he's serving had already sent him a word that said, just like I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Something they call you my servant. But what I need you to do, Joshua, I need you to be of good courage. I need you to be of good cheer. I need you to get up off your face and begin the process of mobilizing yourself. I don't need you wishy-washy in your mind. I don't need you being one thing one day and another thing the next day. But I need you to clear your thoughts and get your heart inclined unto me because I'm going to lead you and I'm going to guide you from this side of Jericho through the wall. I'm going to do for you what no other power can do for I am God and above me there is none other and if you hold on to my hand and I hold you by your hand there's no power nowhere that's able to pluck you out. I'm happy today. And I know who I am. And I'm happy today. And I know who I'm serving. I'm happy that out of all I've been through.
through. I ain't never looked back and thought about going back to the world because I know ain't nothing back there for me. If I die where I am, then so be it. I'll die with my stuff in my hand. Get yourself together. Where you going? Ask your neighbor where you going. Don't let nobody fool you. It's not cute to be pitiful and sad all the time. Strength and gird yourself up in your most holy faith. That's what I was sent for. You don't hear apostle telling you about how pitiful it is, how sad it is. The Bible says some things ought not even be numbered or named amongst the same. What dog you know, a human being you know in the characteristic of a dog that will turn back on his own vomit. Do you hear what I'm saying? And that's what going back to the world is. It's like going to your own vomit. Jesus said any man, having put his hand to the plow and look back, it's not fit for the kingdom of God. Take your neighbor, that ain't cute. Come on, you almost gave up. You need to come down here and let me dump a whole gallon of healing all over your head until you get delivered in your mind. Until you come into the truth about who Jesus is in the midst of your trial, in the midst of your situation, he'll keep you, not even just if you want to be kept, but if you just keep your mind stayed on him. We got to learn how to stop laughing at everything. Everything ain't funny. Tell your neighbor, say what? You don't have any business. Talking about you almost went back. Almost went back to what? Drinking a six pack every day. Almost went back to what? Smoking a carton of Newports every three days. Almost went back to what? Being a whoremonger. Almost went back to what? That's your name. What you going back to? According to the power of God. That works in you. Oh, charge the key. I have. God got something for you. If you just get faithful to the things of God. If you learn how to seek first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and these other things will be added unto you. I'm reminded in the scripture. When Jesus told the people, told those that were following him, said, come on and follow me. Somebody said, well, I'll follow you. Whithersoever you go, Jesus looked at them and said, the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the son of man have not where to lay his head and as soon as the people found out that the natural glory did not match the spiritual glory they came up with excuses ask your neighbor what excuse do you have not to follow Jesus what excuse do you have not to surrender to God's will for your life I got out of my seat today to tell you that you can rest assured it's coming up again it's coming up again one day we got to give an answer for the deeds done in our body those things we did and those things we should have done that we did not get done Jesus looked at him and told him ah excuse me what man said I gotta go and bury my dead father Jesus said let the day bury that day hunt your neighbor and say miss me with your excuses miss me with your excuses I don't care nothing about you getting mad miss me with your excuses about why you can't sell out unto God why you can't surrender all unto God so the glory of God that he has set aside for you might burst forth in your life and on your behalf in due season in every life some rain must fall 
but he has promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us and he is faithful to his every word if he said it then he's going to do it I can testify myself that I once was young and now I'm a little older but I have never, ever, never, 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 ever, never, 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 ever, never, 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 ever, ever seen the righteous forsake him. No, it's see, begging bread, stability. We need to get stability. We need to make sure our anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Tell your neighbor, stay with it. Just stay with it. You have been talking with somebody and then the little conversation go to go on to the left? Just come back over here. Stay with it. Ah, I don't want to hear no sad story. Stay with it. I don't want to hear nothing pitiful. Stay with it. Because the joy, the joy of the Lord. When you start telling me about what God did do for you and how you believe he's going to move, the joy of the Lord is my strength. When you gather all the things you say you want God to do for you and you stand them up beside what you're doing for him. You stop being mad at me for five minutes and compare everything you want God to do for you with what you're doing for him. Throw your faithfulness in there. Come on here. Throw your commitment to the things of God. While you're yet asking him to do it for you. What are you doing for him? Bible said there was a blind man. Blind, amen, bless God. From his birth, from his youth, amen, bless God. Blind as a bat. He's standing there, amen, cannot see. Jesus went up to him. And told him, amen, bless God, go and wash. Go wash in the pool of Shalom. Are y'all with me here? When you talk about apostle, Jesus could have healed him on contact. But Jesus had him held responsible for doing something and playing a part in his own deliverance. So my question to you today is what active part are you playing in your deliverance? What active part are you playing in your breakthrough? What active part are you playing in your overcoming? Uh, somebody said amen at Jesus. Stop the crowd from stoning a lady. True that he did. But we missed what he told her at the end when everybody walked off. He said, now you go and sin no more. He even went as far as to tell some folks, unless something more terrible is going to come upon you. You can't stand in the prayer line and get a prophecy over your life and then go right back to living dirty. You can't stand in the prayer line and lay out in the floor because you stood beside God's anointing and go back and live. Think the breakthrough's gonna come. We got to give God a life fit for his spirit. who will cause all those around us to raise up their standard. What is it, apostle? It's according to the power of God that worketh in us. The anointing of God that stabilizes us in our mind puts us in a position of reset when the enemy comes up against us like a flood. The spirit of God that lives inside of us raises up a standard against him. Y'all hot with me now because I told you I can't bless you. You should have known that. Don't get mad at me because I told you I can't deliver you. Only God can deliver and set free. And only God 
know the intent of a man's heart. We just got to do what we got to do better. And prioritize the things of God above the things of the world. Make up in our minds, amen. What apostle that for God I will live. And for God I die. God help my mind. In Jesus name God teach me. How to walk in a way that's pleasing to you. I'm asking you for a fresh anointing. Give me the type of anointing that you gave your leader David. Whereby I can withdraw myself from people and encourage my own self in the Lord. But through and by your anointing, I can give my own self resuscitation. I can massage my own heart and blow in my own mouth. Tell you I never had an out of body experience. And I was able to encourage myself. My knowledge of the Lord stepped outside of me and said, you know better. My knowledge of the Lord stepped outside of me and said, remember what he's already done for you.